so how do you understand what's happening with your different branch campus data center across WAN or SD-WAN? So let's look at it from the web dashboard perspective first. So from a dashboard perspective, we can show you the different sites in a geographical map widget here and all the different performance. And we can give you metrics related to the WAN in terms of utilization by site, application, and service provider. And you can drill into any of these components. But if you're running SD-WAN, for example, it gives you an extra set of metrics that's very interesting. So from a service provider perspective, we can give you the actual performance of that provider. So things related to uh, loss, delay, jitter. And you can see that you know here the MPLS has a certain higher delay than internet, which is kind of unusual. But you can also look at this data from like an application group perspective or from a site perspective as well. So it gives you a pretty good uh, rich data set. So how do you uh, do exploratory analysis across your WAN? So this core diagram allows you to see from a perspective of bandwidth utilization, inbound and outbound to all the different sites. So it's a good way to like understand, you know, who's consuming the most traffic, uh, who's sourcing the most uh, traffic as well across your uh, WAN links. And this will work across SD-WAN or I, uh, WAN. And if you're interested in a particular uh, site to site in much more detail, we can drill down into a particular site. So let's just look at Tokyo to Sydney. So when you drill down into Tokyo and Sydney, what we do is using NetFlow and other data sets, we could look at that pipe and we can break it up into multiple uh, dimensions. So the first dimension is by application. So this is the top applications that are traversing that pipe. What marking is it using? And then what transport it's using? And then what's the, uh, is there any performance issues? So we can correlate information from SD-WAN or from other metrics about uh, application performance and tell you in a simple view uh, what's happening. And for example, I'm just gonna look at VoIP here and pick that. And then we can look at this VoIP traffic and look at it over time. So we'll see what happens. So right now it's running over MPLS, it's having some critical issues and it switches over to the internet and then it might switch back. No, it's not, okay. So it, the SD-WAN controller is making decisions based off of the voice over IP performance, which transport it should take. So this is actually showing you how that policy is working. So it's very important when you deploy SD-WAN to understand uh, those types of um, metrics. And then you could drill down into like a service provider and we can provide you all the different metrics about uh, latency jitter, packet loss, so this is actually showing you know, traffic that's going over MPLS and then switching over to the internet. Uh, and it's based off of performance data. Uh, for here, it's actually the packet loss. So on the MPLS, we saw that packet loss increasing. We can actually give you a measurement of that. And this will be good for you know, verifying your SLAs, uh, for example. So it gives you a good understanding of what's happening. But let's go to the engineering dashboard real quick to see a little bit more detail. So from here, we could look at all the different uh, application traffic across your WAN, and then we can you know, see uh, which type of applications are using more traffic, what's going back to the data center. But looking at it from a performance perspective, you know, we can kind of see uh, Seattle, Austin you know, having issues, and it's all going back into the data center. So at this point, you know, uh, we could leverage the Corvo capability to, you know, really understand in depth what's happening in that data center. So I'm going to pass that back over to Scott to give us a little bit more detail in the data center side. Yep. Thanks, John. So now that uh, John has identified the uh, the data center as sort of an issue here, I want to kind of take a look at the same problem from the inside looking out. So what we're looking at right here is the Corvo Global Site um, Overview. So here it has all of the different sites that we have on there, um, you know, very similar to what uh, what uh, John just uh, showed us. But there's a couple of key differentiations here. One of them is, is this over here, this microburst uh, bitrate. Let me change this to 24 hours so we can get a little bit better um, uh, view of this. But what we're doing is we're able to sort of understand the microburst live, real time, and, and sort of compare that to average utilization um, metrics. So for example, over here I just have the bitrate. My bitrate never goes above, let's say, 
you know, um, you know, 30, 30 uh, megabits per second, you know, on off hours, it kind of comes back down again. But really, my, my microburst is in the gig um, uh, over here. So I can see those pieces of it. What, well, what's happening? Well, it's that it's that very fine detailed view, that um, that depth, if you will, from the breadth and depth that John talked about earlier. The Corbel solution allows us to see this data in a little bit different way. It allows us to begin to troubleshoot. So how we would troubleshoot this is really pretty simple. Um, if we see a site that we want to go after, um, we can kind of filter this view to kind of just give us, um, you know, just that uh, type of view. Let me go ahead and apply this filter here real quick. Uh, so now we're looking at just one one site, and I can clearly see, um, you know, issues in regards to retransmissions. Uh, my round trip times are kind of going all over the, all over the place here. Um, I can then drill down into um, this view and look at uh, uh, link utilization. So I'm just going to go through and sort of look at uh, link utilization here. Uh, this link utilization just lets me again see this, uh, you know, kind of view here. And again, you can kind of see pretty clearly what's happening. Um, here's my utilization um, outbound. We'll just kind of keep uh, an eye on that that side for right now. Here's my loss percentage over time, and here's my microburst. Now, so this this view right here is a very fine-tuned view into exactly what's happening on the network. And very clearly, there is something. Um, on that link coming from the data center that is constantly sort of in the 400 megabits per second rate, as we can see that across the whole thing, and it happens throughout the entire day. So, so now we got to find it. So, down here I have my top application. So, you know, John talked about DPI and sort of understanding different applications. This is a very similar view to sort of see that. But what I want to point out here is that as we drill down into the data, this is actually going to change. So. Right now, our top application going across the WAN is HTTP. I can see some SMB and some other, other pieces here. But uh, keep your eye on this culprit right here, the servicing culprit that uh, doesn't seem to be, at first glance, uh, an issue um, as we sort of drill into the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down into uh, the data itself. And here we have um, sort of a very uh, 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 specific view, a five-minute period um, of, that, um, of that link. And here's the list of the applications that are on there. Now look, I'm going to drill into one of these um, microburst spikes, and I'm actually going to, um, you know, sort of continue to drill into this so that I can begin to see exactly what's happening. So, look, look at the way that the the applications begin to sort of change as I drill into these individual pieces. And one of the things I want to kind of see here is I want to actually want to see the, the 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 frame or the shape of the of the microburst and be able to to, to determine if it's something that um, that I care about or not. So very clearly, um, we're now at 436 um, milliseconds. Um, I am, you know, way past uh, sort of, um, you know, um, a minute or even 30 seconds or those kind of things. I am, I am definitely got the micro, uh, microscope out. We're looking in there, and very clearly I can see the ServerSync thing um, as my top um, application during that microburst event. So that's the culprit. Like that is the thing that's coming from the data center that's causing um, that that packet loss. Now, I want to be able to check. A little bit about the policies and whether or not those, those packets are actually shaped. And again, here's another example of a couple of clicks, and you're right at the packets within the Corbel solution. Here I have the individual packets here that we're kind of seeing there. So I can, if I want to, I can sort of see all the flags, all the header information, all the sort of uh, default things we want to be able to see here. Or what I might want to do is I might want to come through here and basically um, sort of filter this uh, by. Um, you know that server sync data, and let's let's see if we can see the markings from that. So let me go ahead and sort of apply this, and I'm going to just filter these packets for just uh, that one um, application, and we'll kind of see uh, you know what kind of things we can we can view from that. So here's that server sync of piece here. So if I go ahead and and pull this open, I can look at my marking here. So clearly uh, that is not what we want, right? So this is definitely. Um, you know, uh, something that needs to be shaped and needs to be a best effort type of queue uh, somehow so we can sort of, you know, get it out of those other things. So this is a, this would be a good example of where I would throw it back over to, you know, to John and maybe create a policy for me uh, from those, uh, those different pieces. But this is a, you know, another, another sort of uh, interesting view into uh, that data from the, uh, from the Corval perspective.